Today in this video, I'm going to go across all the basics of the Insta360 Desktop Studio app. Now, 360 footage has a reputation for being really difficult to edit, but Insta360 have made it so easy. Trust me, even if you've got no experience with editing video, you'll be able to do this, no problem. I will link everything you need in the description down below. Also, the chapters will be linked down below so you can go and skip through different bits of information. If there's something specific you wanna know, then you can skip through the chapters. I don't mind, I won't be offended. But this can be quite a long video, so grab a drink, chill out, and just sit and watch me edit some 360 footage because this software is really powerful but yet it's really simple don't be overwhelmed don't be scared of editing 360 footage it's not like 360 footage of old it's really easy to do and you can get some amazing effects with it so without further ado let's jump into it once you open the studio up this is what you are greeted with so what we're going to do is we're going to import the footage that we've recorded so if you can go here to the big plus in the middle you can press this plus here or you can press open there there's three ways to do it i'm going to press the big plus in the middle of the screen then what i'd suggest you do is when you're recording a specific thing then um, start a file, open a file called raw 360 footage and then all your footage is saved in there. You can go back to this and re-import it to start editing it again for different things if you want to but there is another way to do that as well inside this software. So anyway, I'm going to import all this footage that I recorded from a bike ride the other day. Press open, it updates it, have a drink of your coffee, sip your beer, whatever you're doing. Okay, and we're in the 360 desktop studio. This is what it looks like when you're greeted with all the footage. Over here on the left-hand side, you can change the view by pressing these ones to make it a little bit smaller, or you can just have a list. Um, but I like the big screen there because you can actually see what you filmed and what bits um, I want to edit. Let's just have a look around the desktop studio. This is where you can change the view of your footage that you imported. You can have a list, you can have a smaller version, or I like this one because it, you can actually see what you've recorded. Over here you've got your export um, history and your export queue. The great thing about this software is when you're exporting a particular clip, when you've edited it, you've done what you want to do to it, you can export it and then you can carry on working. It just goes into this queue here, it exports it, it does everything it needs to do and you can carry on working. You don't have to wait for it to export, carry on working so you save time. You can add favourites. Over here along the bottom this is what we call your timeline, if you're familiar with editing footage, you'll know what a timeline is. This is the timeline along here. You got back, play, forward, you got the time code there. You got the trim buttons there to trim the actual footage down. Um, there are key shortcuts as well that we can touch on just a little bit later. You can adjust the audio sound up and down. Um, and then you've got add a keyframe, you've got deep track, which is a brilliant feature. The tracking feature on this is fantastic. You've got time shift where you can add different um, effects to your footage where you can slow it down or speed it up. And then you've got motion blur here where you can add motion blur to your time lapses, which is looks really sick. Okay, we can zoom in and out of the timeline. You can also press um, command plus or minus to do the same thing. Here is your export button. Once you've finished, you can export the footage. And then uh, you can see there just quickly, if you just hold your mouse and scroll left and right, don't press any buttons, it gives you sort of a preview there in a little box above. Um, and then the actual screen itself is there. You can move it around by dragging uh, the footage around left and right. Um, that's so easy. Okay, here you've got full screen mode. You can put it into full, full screen mode if you want to. And then here you can take a snapshot of this footage. If you press that button, it takes like a photo of that. Instead of having to take photos with the camera, you can just take snapshots of your video footage. Really handy. This is a brilliant one here is your ratio. So no matter what you're doing, um, whatever footage you're uh, editing, you can change the ratio of it. So if you want to change it to one to one for Instagram or you want to change it to uh, four by three for other social media platforms or you want to change it to nine by 16 for Instagram reels, you can. Easy, one click, it's done. And it, that's the brilliant thing about this. You don't have to mess about recording in different ways um, with the camera. You can just do it all in post-production for different social media outlets. It's, it's brilliant. We're going to leave it at 16 by nine at the moment for YouTube. Um, and then over here, we've got stabilization. Uh, flow state stabilization is added in post-production. You can have it on or off if you want to, depending on what kind of look you're going for. Direction lock, you can lock the camera in one particular direction instead of uh, adding keyframes and moving it around if you want to. Here we've got stitching. Now, 
for the different mods that you can add to this, like the dive case, for instance, the stitching is going to be uh, a little bit different because it adds a little bit of size to the camera. So if here, if you've got the dive case on uh, underwater, you can add the effect and it stitches it. You can see it zooms out just a little bit because of the added um, millimeters that would be on the camera. I'll leave it on normal, so that's that bit there. Stitching, you can you can actually um, you can calibrate the stitching and you can add some optimization here if you want to as well. Here is media processing. You can add AquaVision 2.0, which is for underwater footage. Again, that sort of adds a different color profile to the footage for underwater footage. Here, you can adjust the audio. You can add voice focus, which is for vlogging or something like that, and then action focus for this kind of footage where we want to uh, actually have some stereo action um, audio on it. So you've got that bit there. Here, you can add a logo if you want to. And this is a clever bit here where we've got projects. You can add different projects projects for different clips so you can edit the clip in a certain way then you can create a new project and it resets the clip to its original form and you can edit it in a different way so for instance um, here you, you've, you've I've edited the footage here I've had some keyframes and changed it if we if we play it you can see what happens as the keyframes are studied quickly and then I've created another project here where it, I did something totally different to the footage and I trap myself going left to right. And then if you want to create a different effect, you can do. Let's just show you quickly how easy it is to edit um, some 360 footage. On the actual thing here, we can just drag left and right. So there's me. Um, we want to hover over the bit where I'll go past on the bike. So I believe it's about there. Then what we're going to do is trim this bit of footage we're going to press that button there and it trims the actual clip down to that bit so we've got rid of that on the left hand side and this is where the clip's going to start so we press play actually we go back a little bit so we can press command z at any point to undo what you've just done about there now press play we're going to add a keyframe right at the start here so this is where my footage is starting and then what i want to do is as i ride past that way um, I want to add another keyframe, which is going to be um, me going past like that. So let's just zoom in to the footage a little bit. So then I've added two keyframes, two different positions of the camera, and this is what it's going to look like. We can add different um, dissolves, fade-ins. You can add different transitions to the actual footage. So we want to slip in and slip out fade in like, like that so it whips a little bit and then slows at the end you can do that you could have another one where it slips in and slips out there um, a bit fast slow and then back out again so there's different ways you can edit the keyframe I'm just going to keep it on smooth for the time being nice and smooth right right in the middle I'm going to add another keyframe because I want to zoom in just a little bit so on here you've got different effects for a start you've got default view you've got crystal ball view which is a different effect you've got the well used tiny planet effect and then you've got a natural view right there i'm going to have it at a natural view maybe zoom in just a little bit more as i go past so it's going to as i go past it's going to zoom in and then i'm going to go past again it's going to zoom out just a little bit so and it's going to look a bit like this zooms in and then as i go past we zoom back out if you want to change that to a tiny planet, we can do that will look quite cool. We press that again there. Tiny planet in the middle, back to normal as we go past. There's loads of different effects you can do. And then of course, if you want to save this now, we're gonna there, we're gonna click the end. So that is our actual clip on our export. We click this export button here. We're gonna change the file to we should change it to bike follow two because i've already done this once and then we can change the resolution the bit rate we can change this to ProRes 422 because i had it in final cut just makes it a little bit smaller you can add color plus which is just sort of a hdr effect to the footage if you want to remove grain you can do but that's more for uh, low light footage for removing grain press start export and this exports to where you want to save it it saves in your file that you specify and then we can carry on working we can go to this point here and then just go and carry on working on this here little bubby bubba and then that means it's exported it's job done so it is actually as easy as that i'll show you another one quickly uh, we'll go to this one what i want to do is go down to 
here, create a new project. Then that clears what I've already edited on the bottom, so we're fresh on a fresh footage. We'll go to the bit where I want to track myself. Go back a bit, then we're going to, that's the clip, we're going to edit the clip. This time I'm going to show you the tracking feature. Now, instead of actually doing the manual keyframes, we can actually track me in the center of the frame and it keeps me dead center. We click this deep track button and then all we do is drag, drag a box around me. Press start tracking, let the computer do its work and then it will keep me dead center. It will follow me, track me wherever I go and the footage will look pretty awesome. Of course, it's adding flow state stabilization to this when you export it as well, so it'll look buttery smooth. I'll come to a stop now. We'll press stop track. We'll clip that right at the end and this is the end result. See, it keeps me dead center of the frame. Works so well. Brilliant, and we'll export that in 422. Add a bit of color plus and export that one as well. I don't want to override it. Yeah, I'll override it. Yeah, because I've already done one before. So easy, easy. That's exporting over there on the left-hand side, and we can just carry on editing some other footage. That is pretty much it. There's not much to it than that. It's very simple. The Desktop Studio from Insta360 makes editing your footage so easy, and you can have so much fun playing around with the different effects in here as well. Make sure you do stay tuned because I'm going to be doing another video about the app because the app is where you can do the other different effects. You can import the footage straight from the camera right to the app. You do get slightly better footage doing it in the Insta360 Studio app because it exports it a little bit better in ProRes 422, for instance. Makes the footage look a little bit crisper, but the app is fantastic. So if you want to learn about the app, please make sure you do subscribe down there. Press the bell so you don't miss that upload coming really soon. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. I hope it helped you dispel some fears or anything you've got about 360 footage. It's really easy these days. The Insta360 camera is exceptional. I'm going to be using it a lot over the coming months and years, hopefully. Um, and if you want to grab one of these cameras, there is an affiliate link in the description down below with a discount code there for you if you want to grab an Insta360 ONE X2. It's a fantastic camera. Um, I'll link my video up here as well that I've done on it recently. Check it out. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe, press the bell. Don't miss any future uploads. I've got the Insta360 Go 2 coming soon as well, so don't miss that one. You've got to stay tuned, guys. Hope it helped. I'll see you on the next one, though. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Bye.